And she's also a very funny friend of mine. Let's hear it for Joan LaRosa. Thank you very much. Guys, Ian was talking about puppies. Killing them, but <laughs> puppies. Guys, I have a live puppy living in my apartment. It's not mine, it's my roommate's, but it's still awesome, right? The best thing about this puppy, though, is that she, she, she has to train it. And she's not training it in English, she's not even training it in Mandarin. She's training it in her local dialect, Sujo Ma. So I have this amazing opportunity to learn a new language. And I can just see it now on my resume, it's going to be like, English, native, Spanish, fluent, Chinese, pretty fucking good, and Sujo Ma. Well, actually, I'll be honest, my Sujo Ma isn't that great right now. Like, the only job that I'm qualified to do in Sujo is like be a dominatrix. <laughs> um, so I can like take the bullet train over there on weekends and be like, get down. Get up. <laughs> on the bed. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Look what you did. <laughs> Back in your cage. <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to Sujo. I'll tell you where I'm going to go. I'm going to America soon. I'm really homesick. Yeah, USA. Woo! I'm really homesick. I really miss my mom. I miss my mom a lot, and I know she misses me, and um, she worries about me a lot. And I think the TV that she watches really just contributes to her worrying. She's in those crime dramas, you know, like CSI, NCIS, SVU. They cannot make enough of these for my mom. Like, they bring out New York, Las Vegas, fucking whatever, and they have a new CSI. I don't know its actual name, I just know what my mom calls it. She calls it CSI Nightmares Abroad. <laughs> and uh, this is the CSI where the girl goes to Thailand to volunteer in an orphanage and gets killed and gets her organs stolen. And, you know, the guy goes to India to volunteer in an orphanage and gets killed and gets his organs stolen. And the girl goes to Shanghai to be a stand-up comedian. And, yeah. Uh, I would just love to be in the focus group where they were inventing this next CSI. Like, they're just sitting there and they're like, okay, what is our target demographic? Worried moms. That's so true. Nailed it. So true. Exactly. And I would not even be surprised if next season the new segment CBS rolls out its new show and it's just called CSI. Joan is dead in a gutter without her spleen. <laughs> and it comes on right after Extreme Home Makeover. David couldn't afford the mortgage payment this month. <laughs> and that episode of Friends where all the grandkids get the chicken pox. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so she's she misses me. But I'll, I'll tell you who I miss more than my mom. I miss my little niece and nephew. They're so cute. And I have a new niece I haven't even met. These kids are so adorable. But they don't even like understand life, really. So sometimes they ask really dumb questions. Like my nephew asked me, so mommy has daddy, and Aunt Raph has Uncle Ben. So who do you have, Joni? I'm like, well, um, I mean, I don't know how to say this, but I mean, maybe tonight, if I'm lucky, our host Brian. <laughs> but, uh, my sister-in-law is always quick to jump in, and she's like, no, 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 Joni has a husband. She just hasn't found him yet. They're still looking for each other. They haven't found each other yet. And so then we go for walks, and the kids are always like, maybe he's in here. And my nephew's like, yeah, maybe he's in that pile of leaves. Or, or, or maybe he's under here. And I'm like, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate the effort. But unless my future husband is a Shanghainese waiter, I don't think we're going to find him asleep under the cash register. <laughs> Honestly, though, I wouldn't be that surprised if my soulmate future husband man was a Shanghainese waiter. I mean, I do date a lot of waiters and bartenders. I just really have a thing for guys who talk to me and like ask me a lot of questions. <laughs> and I also, I, I like Asian guys. Uh, is that shocking? I mean, I, I don't understand why it's such a big deal. If a guy has yellow fever, everyone's like, woo, go to the Orient, you get it. But if a girl has yellow fever, they're like, <laughs> and, but, 
actually, I joke about that a lot, but I have an update. I was cured this week. They found the cure for yellow fever at Boshan Public Hospital in the Shuhei District. Um, so uh, the trick to curing yellow fever, uh, well also, also aside from yellow fever, I was also cured of a life-threatening bacterial infection in my spleen. Um, what is a spleen? <laughs> My doctor, when I asked him what it was caused by, was just like, China? <laughs> High quality medicine, y'all. So uh, the trick is to get, get really, really sick, okay, if you want to cure your yellow fever. And then you gotta, you got to get sick enough that you need IVs, like tons of IVs. You need to be in the IV room at Huashan for at least, like, five hours, okay? Then you sit down, you get the you get the IVs put in you, and you just wait. You wait for your iPhone to die. Once your iPhone is dead, you have nothing to entertain yourself except the row of old and middle-aged Chinese men sitting across from you, getting drugs stripped into them. And all you can do is just play fuck, marry, kill in your head <laughs> for two bags of saline. <laughs> so guys, I'm completely cured as I ever. <laughs> Yes, yeah, such a great game. I also, I still have my spleen. They don't need to send CSI crew here. Woo! And I totally cured of yellow fever because no matter how hot that guy is that I'm gonna meet tonight later at KTV, no matter how much I just wanna bring it back to my apartment, I know that in 20, 30 years, he's gonna be one of those dudes. So uh, that is not happening. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> It's getting better and better this night. So actually there's no cure for yellow fever. You know, it just